Hi, I'm Gary Brown. I'm a certified industrial hygienist and I'm a professor at Eastern Kentucky University Department of Environmental Health Science. Today we're going to talk about calibrating a sampling pump. First, let me talk a little bit about the calibrators. The first ones being bubble tubes. This is a one liter, this is a half a liter. These are primary standards. They never need to be calibrated or adjusted. It's a known volume and shape. It can never change. Unfortunately, these are a little tough to go into industry with. So science has invented a pseudo primary standard called a buck calibrator and Gillian also makes a gillibrator. These need to be sent in for calibration annually. The last type of calibration device is called a secondary standard and this is a rotometer. Secondary standard must be calibrated against the primary standard periodically. I don't recommend using these unless you absolutely have to. I always try to use a primary calibration standard. Let me talk about the different types of pumps. We have an SKC pump. Um, this is probably the heaviest pump, one of the most durable. Then we have a Gillian high flow pump and a Gillian personal flow pump. And then last but not least is the buck pump. The buck pump is the lightest and it's the only one that is adjusted by buttons on this keypad. The other ones, we adjust your flow rate, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, with this little screw here. And then you screw this little cap on so nobody can mess with the pump. A couple different types of sampling media we use. First we use filters. Filters are used for dust and fibers. This is what's called a closed face filter. This is used for dust, mainly metal dust is the most common, lead, arsenic, etc. Next is an open face cassette and this is used for asbestos. It's open face so you get an even distribution of the fibers on the cassette and then when they analyze the lab they take out a pie slice and they count the fibers. For gases and vapors we use tubes. We have different types of tubes, most common being a charcoal tube. All tubes have a loading section and a backup section. And if there's more than X amount of the sample on the backup section, the sample is void. Now we'll start calibrating a sampling pump. First thing to do is turn your calibrator on and turn your sampling pump on. Before you calibrate your sampling pumps, you're supposed to have them running for at least five minutes. What I do when I get to the job site is I turn all my sampling pumps on, set up my calibrator, get my sampling media ready, and then I start calibrating. The night before I calibrate, I calibrate to the flow I'm going to be sampling at. For gases and vapors, you can be sampling at flow rates at less than two tenths of a li point two liters per minute. For dust, the average is two liters per minute. So that's a great, uh, tremendous um, fluctuation in range. Once your sampling pumps in running for five minutes, you put in, you put on whatever sampling media you're going to be utilizing. And then you hook it up in the back here to the top part. You have to put soap in on the bottom and generally you don't do this when this is hooked up but you put it in. Then all you do is press this button down and it'll read. Right now we're at 2.77 liters per minute so we want to adjust the flow rate down. Then let it go again, 2.4, so we need to adjust a little bit more. As you can see, this can be time consuming. 2.053, that's pretty close. 2.1, one more little adjustment and hopefully we'll have it. Two point oh seven eight. I think we're 
pretty close. And that's how you calibrate a sampling pump. 